blessings. Welcome forward to Reasonings Right at the Tree of Life. I'm your host, the Great Owl, and this is the second installment of the Birth of the Corporations. Now, in part one, I went into, you know, uh, basically a spiritual and a psychological layout of its template, the death of the Republic, and the birth of the corporation. I ended by relating a lot of the imagery of the ancient structures of what was our nation state identity iconography into the modern iconography of businesses, right? And of the corporation as an entity. I spoke a little bit about the super state, uh, and we're going to speak a little bit more about that because I think that was of more interest than the initial structures because I could not lay it out any other way. I had to start that way. So, blessings once again. Sharme, Shalawan, Shalom, Hawa. Welcome to Reasonings Right Here at the Tree of Life. We are going to examine first a little bit of etymology. And um, It's so interesting that when we consider the essence of what words are, we say they represent um, things or ideas of things, places and individuals purely as a representation of meaning, not as a signatory per se of value. And it is per se because of the current systems we have inherited through the language and also the class and the place and race that you are within this hallelujah reality of life you will get a very very weird interaction with um, phonetics and semantics with the very essence of how our words brought together to have real meaning because if meaning is just something we ascribe to it then where is the value and this is the essence of what I am going to begin with original language began in its semantics and its phonetics from the experience of life, meaning in the organic state of being, not beings, being, the observation of our environment, its place in our auditory, all of the sensory and you know, our visual in the spoken, we imitated, we learned, we resonated within the absorption of the environmental fields. So our pictographic, pictograms, early representation before italics or symbolic representation of an abstracted sound, all those sounds came from a threefold understanding, mind, body, and spirit, time, space, continuum, gas, liquid, solid mind, body, spirit, matter, energy, frequency, density, height, and width. Trinities of trinities are the quadrangle yeah, of trinities. We call that the tetrahedra of the triune. The twelve fold, twelve strand manifestations, principles, attributes of the one divine functionality. How we examined, how we experienced, and how we represented ourselves in language wasn't just sound. You see me? You feel me? It's all included. So the, the tetrahedron, or we can use the triune of triunes, because some people love the nine dimensionality, but let's go with that. <laughs> I'm not going to go with that. I'm just going to keep where I'm at. So this tetrahedron, this tetrahedronic equation of how the breath interacts with sight, sound, smell, hearing, and the sensory. In the environmental fields, our language is born from actuality, experience. 
modern ethos and the system of the augmentation, the removal of the truth, the light, and the way has created language born only in mentation, only in thought ideation. It doesn't have a place in time, space, continuum. It doesn't have a where it has originated in essence through experience when it was originated in experience and how it was originated in experience it doesn't have the calculation of the breadth of it by its height its depth and its width it doesn't have a calculation by its gaseous nature its liquid nature or its solid nature it doesn't have any of those it is clearly placed in the mentation in an idea in the electroneuron processes so all it is is an abstracted minimum being brought forward as a maxim and so this abstraction in perceptivity creating an ideologue because a log is it's a study and it's a recording so they have recorded their ideas hallelujah for really thousands of years and have waited according to some for the minds to evolve or to devolve to sorry baba <laughs> to that way of thinking and so the nomenclatures of speech language and the phonet the phonetic structure of the foundation of our self-image and how we relate when it's squarely placed in an abstraction without actuality everything it creates is unbalanced prejudice disorientation misalignment in the natural law and altering of the native which they call alternative lifestyle behaviors beliefs it's an altering of the native native is the primitive the primal which is the aboriginal really ba, 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 ba. holy hallelujah which is the original so they have abstracted something which they've been in the labs like mixing potions and splicing ideas and trying to implant it through the logos which is our mind into our behaviors to basically change our DNA to change our genetic structure to reflect an idea they have that has no basis in actuality so this is what it's all about when I'm speaking about the birth of the corporation so let's look at the logos and the logos so the logos is the mind Mentation. So the mind is not just the brain. It's the mental processes, functionalities, and the applications that are derived from these processes. And these processes are what science is based upon, how we analyze and study the nature, how we study nature, its inherent qualities, properties, attributes, right? And so in this construct of understanding where language originates, and to see that in the logos is a storage a logging of the information through the recording processes of thoughts and emotions so it's a process between heart and hallelujah and mind right and so they record the information and in this is where we have the perception of self so the heart will measure it in all of its faculties in terms of its emotive that it's the unseen properties which cannot be calculated purely in terms of the it's going out with height depth solid liquid and gaseous the heart will work on the where when and how right so it works on those the mind will work on the mentation the logos will work on the others i told you about the width height depth gas solid liquid and will couple it with the information of the heart and all that comes together as the logos so in the public the logos was 
treasured for its prowess, its power, its abilities, its attributes that gave rise to a forward moving ethos in the cultures and in the ways of life and belief. And people talk about in the 20th, 19th, 20th century, how human life has developed far beyond how it was for the previous 300 or 400 years. By the way, in their civilization, by the way, it's not in the whole of life, it's just in their civilization. And so they would credit um, the, the, the age of the Republic as, as driving the development of human culture and life past the state of the monarchy that was basically keeping power within uh, a certain um, exclusive structure. So the, the time of the Republic representing that development and expansion of the, the logos has brought about the time that we are in now because the minds expanded so much they began to recognize that there is more that they could do with the power that they had amassed through all this time of experimentation and growing in wealth, the wealth fraternal, the brotherhood. They grew in so much they grew in so much wealth, they accrued so much power that now they began to transfer the power of the logos. And its symbolic meaning coming from the ancient times with we knowing that there are symbols representing experiences because the mind stores it. So we had like the flower of life, which has the sequence of the entangled charge and spin, the rhythm of the breath, push and pull. It had the, the, bio, the bipedial magnetic spectrum of the electrotonal energy of the particle, particum, the alignment of the frequency in modulation and in actual um, oscillation right and so all this information as it was structured in the symbolic language in the mystery schools hidden away from the average minds this knowledge codified the symbols that we could approach the symbols like a Taj Mahal and have a reaction beyond just our sensory because it worked on all of the frequencies I already told you about the tetra triune right that has all the 12 strand attributes of the divine presence right how the light and the sound and the magnetic frequency creates the environmental field creates the language right the word of God making flesh hashe, and how we construct our mentation our mentality our minds coming to the logos that now become the logos of this major corporation because the logos was being trained into self-awareness by the symbolism and many people are familiar with all these symbolisms I will not mention any specifically unless it's relevant to this and so these symbolism were a highly concentrated energy field of all of the frequencies of presence and being codified and so you couldn't just experience it and be the same it took years to experience it on all the levels and frequency. A lifetime in mastery in the master school, the rabbis, the rebbe, the rabbinis, right? And so that is transposed from the age of the republic into the age of the corporation because they recognized if they had so much power, they took all of those symbols from the ancient of experiences and now have codified them as product logos, the age of branding, hallelujah. And we all know when they started branding and started the corporation status within the 1861 year in the Americas. But starting really from 1492 when, you know, Christopher Colon started his war against the, the Moorish vassal states and the indigenous nation states here, Koribi Shababa, in the Americas. And so they began the corporation status by transposing all ancient symbols of which our deep subconscious memory was already trained into understanding into coalescing to into drawing to in accruing ourselves to we use these symbols to resonate our sense of self and well-being these were now being transposed now in this time to product logos and symbol branding and so each country has to have a brand the first branding began in its accentuated essence of the flags it contained the mentality, the mentation of its people, so the flags are logos, right? And it represents the mind, the intentions, the very energy, the driving force of its people, all right? But now all of this has been bought by a nation state 
who got so smart, it transposed its physical landmass and empires into a spiritual landmass and empire, becoming a spiritual entity, as corporations are now registered as an entity. Hallelujah. So this is what you need to understand. So this fallen empire of which the Bible speaks, of which clairvoyance and spirituality shows, Hasiyar Baba, did this weird thing in probably about 320 to 376 BC and you can look it up and they basically transposed themselves, transmuted their empire that was crumbling around them from all the attacks from all the nations around into a spiritual super state that superseded landmass and needed to have military to subjugate hallelujah people now it used its spiritual power its religious power and its wealth and its influence that its religious and its spiritual power now spread across to reconfigure the minds so all the flags that was under this empire had to be a symbolic connection to the so-called mother country, hallelujah, the unholy concoction. So this unholy concoction, a uh, physical geographical empire being transmuted into a spiritual empire, into a spiritual nation, into a spiritual entity, into a corporation under which all corporations registered like an intellectual property, its construct of the ontological design of human consciousness. The people, the lab rats, the people, the subjects, the people, the citizens, the people. All those are different terminologies in different epochs of time. Now the people in this Orwellian dystopian nightmare are products and services because the power to which they had amassed so much of their intent is now represented in products and services. Hence we know of our age where we have the Trekkies, the Techies, the this, the that. And each product has created its cult-like, cult-like, cultural-like following because it has now replaced the original idea of patriotism, hallelujah, which was country or which was monarchy in the ancient times when it was monarchical status or empire status. Now, in this age of the corporation, it's allegiance to your favorite brand, brand identity, and your brand is synonymous with A, B, C, D, and E, and so this is the rise, the birth and the rise of the corporation, a re-engineering of the entire consciousness of a human being, a humanid. For hundreds of years, hallelujah, they have worked on this. So in essence, you could say it's a polar opposites of, of the enterprises on earth. The free enterprise that thrived for thousands of years in ancient Aboriginal culture and now the superstructure, the super state that is now superseding all in a brand recognition, a branding of the people like cattle and chattel, a branding, a stratification, identification of all in recognition of one superstructure beyond state borders and boundaries because now there will be no state borders and boundaries, it's one state an inclusive oligarchy of materialism, of serfdom, the corporations has got us now hooked to the symbols we wear on our chest, on our waistbands, on the coat, on the clothes, on the bags, because that's where the power is being drawn. It's ancient inaccuan magic from the Lothgate and the Vulgate, ways in which they have studied the dark arts, are the semantical structure that really put word sound and power the electrotonal with the frequency of light and the resonation of the magnetic aura your speech is dead and because the spirit is the word and the speech is dead there's no life in the being lifeless robotoids zombie kusariya shebaba is upon us yes zombification annihilation of the soul ethos, of the soul logos. Return, ye my people, to the internal calling of the soul. Come out of her, my people. Do not take her mark upon your head and your forehead. 
do not coalesce onto our system. It's fallen, it will fall. When the sun's black in the sky, all that is attached to this mechanism will fall away. Praise Yahshua Mashiach, seek the internal truth then. Our ancient cultures already taught us the sun, moon and stars. Breathe in the breath, the halo, the resonation. So when you say hello, don't be caught up by these new age people telling you about it's hello. It's halo, hola. It is halo, we speak light. So please understand, one more thing I will say before I go. When you talk about mourning and people are telling that you're mourning, all English, Moore's nag, that's mourning in a darkened state emotionally, subjective state. Moore's when is mourning, light, an observational state of seeing something that is objective. So Moore's when is mourning, bright and glorious because the light, the halo, Khurisha Baba, of being is upon you, not Moore's nag, not mourning. Please get your etymology correctly. Sharme. Shalawan, Shalom, Hawa, Kasik, Great Out, Here, Hamaikano, Hamaika, Blessings, Glory unto the source of the Great Spirit, the I Am, Espiritu, Respiritu. Give birth to your true self, Yeshua, the Mashiach.